Anna. I am the CEO and creative director of Valiant Game Studio, a very small indie studio based in Stockholm, Sweden. Uh, and what we do at Valiant is a game called Pendula Swing. It's uh, an episodic adventure game set in a fantasy version of the American Roaring Twenties. So really what you do in the game is you are this old hero who saved the world like 300 years ago. Like this dwarven hero who, you know, slaughtered the final boss basically. And since then you haven't really done much. You kind of settled down, you retired, but now you come back to a world because your magic axe has been stolen. So you come back to a world that's very different from what you used to. So we really play around with like stereotypes from fantasy and from RPGs, and uh, like just to make fun of it. We uh, we talk about like goblins that want the right to vote, stuff like that. Um, uh, and yeah, so like I said, it's episodic. We have four episodes already out in the market. Uh, and it's going to be seven in total. Uh, and when we release the the final episode, we're also going to put everything together in a deluxe edition. And we're going to release on even more platforms that we have tonight. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I heard that. I like how your uh, game has episodes, how it's being released in episodic format with the first episode released for free. I, I found that a very interesting uh, business choice. How did that How did that pan out financially, and would you use that style again? Uh, it was definitely the right choice, we think, for this game, because it's our first game as a, as a studio. We really wanted to just get something out as quick as possible, so just like try to market, like make a name for ourselves, like to just be able to show, show something. Because as a small indie, uh, trying to make it in this world, like just working on a game for like, I don't know, two years and then hoping that's going to do well, that's so scary. So we just wanted to like put it out there as soon as possible. We don't know if we're going to do it again in the future. It's like up to each game. Like It depends on what, what kind of game we want to make. Right. Was it difficult having your the first uh, episode be free? Because then you know you wouldn't be getting any revenue back until the second one comes out. Uh, but actually, we released the first and second one at the same time. Oh, I uh, see. So as soon as like we had something, you could also pay it. Uh, so that was really it. Really worked out well. For yeah, us. that's so, a um, actually, yeah. You're right. That's a great compromise. I didn't think of that. Yeah. Awesome. I'm I'm really fascinated by the art style. I really like what you guys did with how the game looks. How did you decide on this art style? Uh, that's what to say. Like we're really, really inspired by like old RPGs, like Baldur's Gate, stuff like that. More recently, like Pillars of Eternity and, and Divinity and so on. So like we we want to like take that aesthetic, but just like kind of make it our own, so to speak. Um, yeah, so it's so really like just inspired by what we like, and like since we we play around with stereotypes from that kind of game, we want it to look like it. So if you like, for example, Baldur's Gate: The Pillars of Eternity, you are right. more likely to pick this up because like, oh wait, this looks like something I might like. Uh, but we're also inspired by like point and click and so on. So um, uh, like we have a little bit of that as well. So like you will also recognize some of those elements when you play, when you play the game. Yeah, absolutely. And yeah, I think the isometric style helps with that too, because when you think of those old games, isometric was so common back then. Yeah, uh, yeah. That's definitely what first comes to my mind. Yeah. Uh, we, ha- we haven't seen it in this uh, this gameplay, but I saw in the trailer um, a mini-map of like oh, yeah. the whole region, mm-hmm. and most of it seemed to be covered with fog, uh, fog yeah. of war style. How many, how many different locales are there that the player will be able to reach, different environments? So really what an episode does is that it unlocks an area. Oh, I so, see. So, for example, the next one in episode 5 is going to be the entertainment district. So it's going to be like a completely new district that you can now access. Uh, so you can say that it's seven like larger um, uh, well, uh, areas that you can visit. And they also have sub-areas. So for example, in the Harbor district, there is also a bar. And you're going to be able to visit the speakeasy when that's available. And so on. So they have sub-areas as well. Oh, so a speakeasy is going to be a prohibition. Oh, yeah. I guess that makes sense, Roaring Twenties. Actually, uh, what's prohibited is Dwarven Ale. Because like, <laughs> Dwarven Ale is so much more potent than normal alcohol, so right. like, you really have to like, go through speakings to get it. And also like that kind of ties into actual history, where like, I don't know, Irish immigrants, for example, treated differently because of their alcohol culture and so on. So we kind of like, we play around with actual historical events and, and like, how people are treated each other, but you know, with a fun twist, because it's Dwarves and Elves. And right, and then the, the other design point, speaking of things I saw in the trailer and the blurb, um, the player character starts out with a lot of money because she is a hero. She, yeah. she's, she's a famous adventurer who saved the world at least once. And yeah. So you start off the game with a lot of money, which I find is very interesting because usually in these RPG-style games, money is the limiting factor yeah. in the early game. Yeah. Why did you decide to do it the way you did? Uh, right, really, the point of the game is not like to award money and get all of the cool stuff. and like you, There's not even a level-up system. Like There's no oh. fighting or anything. So really what you do is you talk to people and you get items and like uh, you 
if you do them like favors for them, then they will help you and so on. So like the way that you kind of finish the game is through you know talking and like being a nice person, or sometimes you're an asshole and that you might work as well. Uh, so like everything is kind of in you know picking up items, uh, helping people and stuff like that. So you, right, money is not as crucial as in many other games. So rather you like you can use it to choose who you want to be. Like are you still kind of you know, selfish and you know, cheap. Even though you're rich, or do you choose to use your money for good? So it's more like we almost use it more like a moral uh, tool rather than like something to improve your character. Right. The game right. Well. What platforms is this available on? Right now, it's on PC and Mac. But when we have the full deluxe edition uh, ready, then we're going to release it on more more platforms. Uh, we can't say exactly which one's going to be right yet because we don't want to make promises we can't keep. But uh, as, as many as possible. We're looking at consoles. We're looking at mobile and so on as well. Awesome, and the first four episodes are available right now? Yes, exactly. Four out of seven. Oh, so we're going to finish uh, before the end of the year. Before the end of the year, the final yeah. three episodes? Yeah. Oh, that's awesome. I'll look forward to seeing them. And thank you so much for talking to me today. Thank you so much.